Hey everyone, welcome to the Leathercraft Community Podcast Show. I am sitting here with an award-winning, multifaceted leather craftsman. He is known industry-wide, and I cannot wait to share his story with you guys. His name is Takeshi Yonezawa, and I am just so honored to be sitting here. How are you doing today, Yoni? I'm great. How are you, Steven? I'm, hey, it's a little bit rainy outside here in Portland mm-hmm. today, but you know what? I think we're going to get through it. So, yeah. um, I wanted to ask you, how did you get to Portland? What is this story? And where are you from? So I'm originally from Japan. And then I, I wanted to be a professional musician until I get 30. Okay. And then so I got 30. And then I realized I didn't have enough skill and knowledge for the music. <laughs> but I was uh, doing leather work. I started leather work when I was 20. And okay. then I already selling my stuff too. And then, okay, let's pick up leather. And then I got married and then my wife got job in here. Gotcha. So I, I told her like, okay, now I can go anywhere, but I need studio. <laughs> <Then came here. laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you have a studio in Japan or did yes. you just work out of like a little like room or something? No, just a house. Just a like, house. Yeah. Uh, when I live in, lived in Tokyo, it was tiny apartment okay. and then I was, uh, doing leather work, but I moved back home, then used uh, one room for studio. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then, so now this, this studio that you're at right now, this is, this is inside your home. Mm -hmm. And this is a, this is a beautiful space. It's, this is a really big, it just flows and it feels so good. Like I'm sure that uh, people can see from behind us, uh, there is, it's very calming. Mm-hmm. So you, what you've done is you curated such a beautiful little space. Yeah. And how you... Uh, it takes time to like make good studio. Like um, actually it took three years to get this setting. Now for your leather work, do you... I know you do wallets and I know you do like guitar straps. Mm-hmm. Are there any other things that you do that you make and sell? Or, or is everything just custom order? Um, so I used to do custom order, but um, I stopped like taking like full custom. Yeah, I still can do like same custom. Like, okay, so this wallet, but different color mm-hmm. or different uh, leather yeah. types. Yeah, that's it. So wallet, card case, guitar straps, and bags. Mm. And. Is there any particular type of leather you like working with, or are you just open-minded to trying all different types? Um, so my favorite leather is um, goat skin gotcha. from Japan. That's really unique skin. Mm. So hide has to be from India, like Indian goat skin, and then tanned in Japan. Mm. So I use that skin a lot. And then for tooling and artwork, I use Harmonog. And what is it about that Japan goat skin? that you like so much? So I like that um, texture Mm -hmm. and the history too. Like um, American brought tanning process to Japan and then Japanese learned from him, like how to tan. Then after that, like uh, the Japanese evolved a little bit. Mm. And then it's it's really unique and then historical leather. Yeah. And then one tannery is making leather like for me like oh i need this thickness and this finishing and then yeah they are helping me gotcha so that's why like i always can get oh really good one really yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> now do you use any like japanese knives or any like very specific tools that are from your country so i usually use japanese style leather knives mm. a lot also um this one Ah, can I see that? Yeah. Oh, this is, so this is a nice, uh, it's a nice uh, utility knife. Mm-hmm. And then, but it, it flows so smoothly. Yeah. Gosh, that is really it's, nice. I have like plastic one too. Yeah. Body, but the metal body is The metal body, yeah. Better. Yeah, the, the yellow. Wow. Yeah, they, they feel really good. Mm-hmm. And then I have like lots of knives, same style. But yeah. I have one for just cut. Yep. And then one for skiving. Gotcha. You know, I just 
uh, I just purchased a Japanese style knife like this from Ryan at Little King Goods, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it, the knife is it's beautiful. But this this feels this is so lightweight. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, this has got to be. <laughs> this is like this is insane. This is beautiful. Yeah, and then like blade was like this long. Oh, it was long. This and one then, too. Was like oh, this. and you just yeah, through time of. Uh, yeah, sharpening, sharpening it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, this is from my the master. Oh. When he retired, yeah, he gave me his tool. So, did you do a, a leather apprenticeship in Japan? Uh, that was year and a half, like less than two years. Gotcha. And what was it that he was teaching you? So, so here's the story. Okay. So, I did a little small, like tiny exhibition. Then he, the one old guy came in and mm. he said, I do leather work too. And then um, I asked him, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And then he just, he didn't say anything. Just he showed me his coin purse. Gotcha. And then that one is the need skill, like real skill. It's just a coin purse. Then I just checked it. Wow, this guy is um something and then after that i called him after my exhibition so i would love to visit your shop and he said yeah please come and then i went into his shop it's just really tiny space and then uh one bell knife skyver three sewing machine and then actually uh, this size table Hmm. So this cutting surface, he gave it to me. So actually, he was sitting there. Oh. I was sitting here and then learn. Gotcha. Yeah. Then, so I saw like crocodile skin, like briefcases. Oh, my. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so he was um, specialized for exotic skin, like uh, crocodile, ostrich, lizard, and those kinds of stuff. And then he used sewing machine mm-hmm. and then making bags and wallets for the like maker mm. then i asked him like i w- i would love to learn from you and then he said okay so i was looking for a person like you like he was going to retire and he wanted to pass on like someone to like his knowledge mm-hmm. so i just just good timing and i just got lucky and yeah. he extended his retirement and then he teach me like everything you are very blessed Mm -hmm. you are very blessed because that is i mean you must have got him at the right time Mm -hmm. at the i mean right place right time and then all of a sudden it was like boom you Uh just uh now you just gained this wealth of knowledge from such a uh, a valuable resource and then he was like i was going to learn how to use sewing machine Mm -hmm. but he taught me how edge skiving is important so when he skyped edge, almost 70% work is done. Like mm. same as like that. Yeah. So he taught me like about bell knife skyver. Yeah. That's why like I can do like my artwork, like skyving technique. And then I'm teaching a uh, bell knife skyver setting too. Oh, so okay. It's all from him. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. All right. I know you also have built a Western saddle. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about how did you learn to build a Western saddle and, um, and, and all the, the, the carvings and the floral tooling and the Sheridan style on that saddle? Okay, so for the carving, uh, first, like, this is how I started uh, leather work. Um, I wanted to buy carved wallet, but uh, when I was 20, I, I didn't have much money but those are like really expensive. Also, I couldn't find like what I like, like the worth money and, but always, mm, this is okay, but I don't wanna spend like $500 or something like that. And then my dad used to own car body shop, like fixing car body. Mm-hmm. And then my mom loves uh, drawing a picture. So easy to like came up, mm, I should try. So that's how I started and then learn uh, Sheridan style. And then 
So why I build the Western Saddle is when I decide to um, move to the US, I just thought, oh, if I can build Saddle, that will be cool because there is like re real cowboys are there. Yes. And then before I moved, moved to the US, um, I visited here for almost like three months, like 90 days, almost max. And then I visited three saddle makers and then learn how they build the saddle. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> um, I built one with one guy and then I learned like grand sheet work from the other guy and then um, fixing saddle and cleaning and then some tips from other guy and then came back to Japan. Then I built one saddle by myself and then I entered that uh, debut, like world leather debut. Yep. And then I got third place. Then, yeah, that's a good start. I thought it's a good start. Yeah, yeah. I but, mean, it's a, it's a beautiful saddle. Mm -hmm. And it's the fact that you got third place on that is mm -hmm. but, <laughs> amazing. Um, but, like, um, if I went, like, more deeper, like, okay, I want to learn more, then uh, I can't ride horse. I don't know how to ride a horse. Mm -hmm. The Western saddle is for rider and a horse. So... Mm, no <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah i i'm dabbling into how to wash and do a little bit of saddle repair that's what i'm i'm just kind of getting my fingers wet a little bit on this and mm -hmm. do a little bit of education and watching youtube videos and and stuff like that so i'm just just getting there yeah. <laughs> just getting there hey y'all i want to talk to you about the very first sponsor for the leathercraft community podcast show and it is leather machine company if you are looking to upgrade your workshop or to speed up the process on making items, then look no further than Leather Machine Co. They have very sewing machines of multi-purpose needs, along with leather cutting and splitting machines. Check out their website or give them a call for more information. Now, let's go back to the show. So, after the saddle, what was the next big leap for you on project that you made? So... I moved to the U.S. and then, yeah, I was making like wallets and stuff. Also, uh, I was doing like tooling job mm -hmm. like for chaps maker and saddle maker. Then, um, so I started um, artwork when I lived in Japan. Then after a couple of few years, I moved to here. So I really liked doing artwork. And then I wanted to make something. And 2012, so, oh, I want to make bird out of leather. Yeah. That idea came up. And then I was studying about raptors. But um, I didn't have enough skill to build. So, okay, so 2012, you didn't have enough skill. You, you recognized that you lacked skill. You wanted a bird. Yes. And now you're, you got to figure out how to gain these skills. Yes. And then the biggest problem is how to make feather. Okay. Like top and bottom. Yeah. So I had to figure that out. And then I came up, okay, so I love Native American stuff and culture. So, okay, let's make um, war bonnet. So I can make war bonnet. Then I have to figure it out to make feather and then those feathers are like less than the making whole bird right yep yeah then um i made um war bonnet for the debut that war bonnet is <laughs> it's stunning <laughs> they're like so this thing is 100 percent pure leather that's yes just uh leather and then thread and leather and thread mm -hmm. and how did you make those little beads? Because when I look at this war bonnet, it is like you have, I don't know, is it is it like 2,000 beads on this? No, um, 3,600 or something. I made like 4,000 beads. Wow. Gosh. And then you just sewed them on. 
yeah, like Reggie stitching. Like yep. yep. Show. Yeah. It is, it's a stunning piece. Like Thank it you. is like when you look at it, you just kind of have to take a moment and sit back and just be like, wow. Like it doesn't even like when you see a photo of it on Instagram, mm -hmm. it looks like a real war bonnet. It doesn't look like leather. So like oh, I have to give you the biggest round of applause for that one because that is just, it. it's a stunning piece. So after the war bonnet, mm -hmm. you had to have said to yourself, I'm going to challenge myself and do something mm -hmm. even more and flex your creative muscles. Mm -hmm. What was the next piece that you made? So next one, like, so next year, like I wanted to like enter the competition again. Yeah. And then, so, okay, and then. I'm Japanese, so how about bonsai tree? Actually, before I make my Goyomats uh, bonsai tree, I I helped like uh, German International School fifth grade um, students uh, fundraiser event. So I made a little uh, maple tree with them. Mm. So that was like helping them also like practicing <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah so after that um i contacted to like a bonsai specialist um so i contacted i sent email to him hey, uh, i'm a leather artist and then my next project is making goyomats out of leather he didn't write back <laughs> probably he think, yeah. what is this yeah he's probably thinking this guy's <laughs> yeah. this guy's crazy like yeah. you can't make a bonsai tree uh -huh. out of leather and then uh, after a while like i sent him uh email again and he he wrote back to me okay and then i went to his bonsai garden and then the bonsai has like lots of rule so this species has to be in this pot i didn't know that yeah it's lots of rule like easy to go wrong so that's why like i went to his garden and then asked him okay, i'm going to make a uh, japanese white pine like goyomatsu and uh, age is around like 60 years old so like this big so please uh, teach me like about goyomatsu and then yeah he taught he taught me like okay the branch go this go this and then it has to be this kind of pot and then um, after I finished my bonsai, I brought it to his garden. And then he, he said to me, oh, you can work. You, uh, you can like wire the bonsai tree. Like actually this branch row is like, uh, only a few people knows like this flow. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> from getting a compliment from a bonsai master. Mm -hmm. And the roots are like, looks perfect mm. wow that yeah. Was, yeah and how many needles are on that bonds that you made because uh, it, i made like seven thousand ten or something like that oh my god and and you glued every single one of them on mm -hmm. i used uh white glue and then goyomatsu so go means five okay so white pine is like five pine needle each bundle Oh, okay. So that's what's go yo yo means leaves. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So five leaves then. Mm -hmm. So that's so why one. that. Yep. So yeah, I used the white glue and then just you like, put them all in. Mm -hmm. It looks like an actual bonsai tree. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stunning. Like I don't think people know, but like when you see this stuff, it 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 is just absolutely jaw dropping. It is like your work and how you sculpt. Like, how did you make the tree trunk? That I, that I'm I'm so baffled on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, okay. So how to make leather bonsai? Actually, I learned this technique from Japanese woman. Oh. Okay, she's making like miniature bonsai tree, like the leather bonsai. Also, she's master bonsai artist. Okay, mm -hmm. so I learned from her like this technique. But making life size is yeah, I have to figure that out, like other structure and skill. But so how I made uh, that trunk is use leather powder and then put white glue in it and then mix it. So kind of like cookie dough. Yeah. And then I dropped uh, ink, like black ink. Yep. And then kind of like 
like blackish, like gooey stuff. Yep. And then just put it. Uh, before that, I put leather for the texture and then put that paste. And then I used Dorimel and then just sand it. You sand so it. put like more like fine texture. Yep. And then the white part, I used ash. Gotcha. So just brushed ash. On, onto the leather. Yeah. And what kind of leather is it? Did you use to make that bonsai tree? I used uh, ramskin. Oh, really? Yeah, but it can be like any kind, like for the trunk. And mm-hmm. then uh, pine needle, I used uh, herman oak. Now, herman oak, is it just veg tan or herman oak, yeah, like tooling, carving? Tooling, yeah. Tooling the tooling leather, mm-hmm. gotcha. And so you made the war bonnet. You made the the goyo, uh, mm-hmm. goyo matsu yeah. bonsai tree. And then what was the next big uh, challenge that you decided to give yourself? So, yeah, after bonsai, like, I became, like, judge. And then um, I kind of, like, lose time to doing, like, artwork. Mm-hmm. But uh, luckily, I cho- chose, um, I was a member for the Brinto Museum exhibition, like, carving exhibition. Yep. So I carved one panel. Also, I could display two more my personal artwork. So I made a briefcase, top flame, doctor bag. And then I used a Japanese like traditional skill, which is um, that skill was lost. Really? Yes. It was um, Edo or Meiji era. Uh, Morikawa Kichibe, he invented that technique. And how did you learn it? Okay. So... Since I moved here, like I got into like Japanese culture and technique. So before I moved to the U.S., like always, oh, like U.S. is so cool. <laughs> but when I moved here, like uh, wait, um, I'm Japanese, so I should know like Japanese fine works. And then I was looking for online um, auction, a kind of eBay, and then I find one cigarette case. And then I saw the pictures and then the side seam was really interesting, like kind of like this. Yes, yeah. it has this very unique... Yeah, dovetail joint. Yes. And then I thought, I want to get this. And then it was really cheap, like no one bid. And then I was bidding and then ended up, it got like over $500, but uh, it was expensive, but... I was, I, I think, um, no, this is now like 500, but if I figure out, figured out how to do this, that's priceless for me. Yep. So I can pay $500, but if I lose this chance, I missed this chance, probably I'm not going to get, see this anymore. Yep. So I bought it and then I looked it. What is <laughs> this <laughs> did, did you take it apart and or no, no, no but you just studied it very it was, deeply it was a really good good condition so i was going to take it apart but i felt no i shouldn't and then i just thinking about it but i couldn't find out and then i restart searching it and then i luckily i found one like busted one I bought that and then take it apart under the microscope. But it's over 100 years old. The leather just taking apart. Wow. Uh, I couldn't figure out exact what they did, but I kind of got idea. Mm -hmm. And then since then, I start um, testing and testing and testing and trying and error. It took five years to figure it out. Five years mm-hmm. to figure out that that dovetail mm-hmm. pattern. Wow. All from a cigarette case, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. And then I, I contacted the Japanese museum who is uh, correcting those fine cigarette cases. And then I asked them, okay, I figured out how to do this. Do you know anyone do this? 
um, now these days, mm-hmm. they were like really surprised. Like, <laughs> we don't know anybody. So you essentially, um, you basically brought a technique back from the dead. Mm-hmm. Hey everyone, I want to introduce you to the show's second sponsor, and that is Leather Crafters Journal Magazine. They are based out of Rhinelander, Wisconsin. They publish six magazines per year covering a large variety of topics such as how to do projects, event details, where to buy tools, and even a classified section. There is so much to see and read from cover to cover. Head on over to their website and sign up for a subscription so you can stay up to date on all things Leathercraft. So now you've created the War Bonnet, the Goyomatsu, and the Wind of September mm-hmm. bag, the doctor bag. Mm-hmm. Is, is it a doctor bag or is it just a briefcase? Uh, it's, I would say Roya's bag. Okay. It, it holds like, lots of uh, documents. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you created those three wonderful things. That leads up to the big one that everyone seems to know and it just everyone's jaw hits the floor. And this is a culmination of just now years and years from your story about learning how to make feathers for the the war bonnet, you have entered this piece called Determination Mm -hmm. into the 2023 world debut, and you won first place, Mm -hmm. and it is, uh, it's a hawk, or is it a red-tailed hawk? Yeah, it's um, Eastern red-tailed hawk. Eastern red-tailed hawk. This thing looks like like a piece of taxidermy. It looks, it is, (laughs) it is so... It, I just can't even put into words how incredible it is to see this up person. And like photos just don't do it justice. Like when you, I've seen it at the trade show mm-hmm. at when you entered it at the competition. And I just, I just stood there and I had to like cross my arms and I was just kind of like, how is this leather? How, how? I just couldn't wrap my brain how you assembled it. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, hold on, hold on. I got, I got to do some research. I got to look at his Instagram. And, and I just, and I went down this deep rabbit hole and I was like, I just started watching every one of your, your videos and your mm-hmm. posts. And, and it just, it makes sense how you did it now. But it, again, culmination of, of time. Mm-hmm. Um, do you mind discussing and telling us how many hours did it take for you to make this? And what are these techniques that you used mm-hmm. to put this thing into this jaw dropping a uh, piece of artwork. Okay, so uh, I told you uh, before. So the first idea was 2012. Okay, since then I was searching about raptors. So at that time I was, I still lived in Japan, and then my area has lots of black kites. So I was going to make black kite, but I moved here. Here is no black kite, but. I, I saw like red tail hawk, so they are so cool. And then really connected to um, Native Americans too. Okay, so let's switch to the subject, to the red tail hawk. Then I made a Waban net. And then after that, like that project is always in my head. Mm-hmm. And then I was searching, how can I learn? Because those raptors are really protected. I can't get feather, it's so hard to see them. Then I found um, wood carving, and then I found amazing carving artist. And then he was offering a seminar for Eastern Red Tail Hawk male. Okay, if I take this seminar, um, I can get that dimension and colors too, like how to mix paint and color. So I took that 10 days seminar and then I we carved red tail hawk. And then after that, I thought, okay, I got every information, but I wanted to make open wing. Okay, so <laughs> I had to learn more about it. And then, yeah, luckily my really good friend has connect, connection to the museums uh, who is taking care of injured raptors and stuff. And then I went to those museums and then talked to like raptor specialist and then also see a life bird. Also, I hold a red tail hawk too. So that's what um, I learned about the bird. Then the learning process was 
most difficult part. Yeah. Yeah. Then actual work is take three years because right after start this project, COVID hit. Oh. Yeah. So my son was three years old, like daycare closed, like everything closed. Th that time was really s scary, right? At, the, <laughs> at first. Yeah. So I had to stop like everything. Then, yeah, it took three years, but total hour is 2,000 hours. Wow, man. It's, it's, it literally is lifelike, like a hawk, down mm -hmm. to the T. You know, the, and the best thing about it, this is what I, I love this so much. We look at this art piece, and we're just kind of like, we just cover our mouths. And because we drool, it's so, it's so beautiful. But we, we didn't make it. And you made it, mm -hmm. and it, and like you know the the struggles and the things that you've messed up on. How many feathers did you make? Did you mess up on? I want to know. <laughs> I want to. I just uh, need to know. Actually, probably three or four. Three or four. Mm -hmm. And how how many hours does it take to make one feather? Um, Walk us through the process. So you you you. I guess I guess fifteen to. 20 hours. Yeah. And that's from drawing it, cutting it, and do uh, you stamp it? No, I use a wood burner. A wood burning tool. Yeah, for put texture, like one line. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you airbrush it? Paintbrush and oh, airbrush. Pair, but, okay, so both. You're doing both. And then once it's done, you are basically gathering the feathers and you're trying to figure out the proper form mm -hmm. of the actual piece that you're building. Mm -hmm. It is just... <laughs> It's stunning. It's a stunning piece. Mm -hmm. How did you make the shiny beak and the eyeballs? So the eyes are glass eyes. Okay. Like a taxidermy. So that one is um, all leather except the eyes. Got it. And then beak is actually just a leather. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then. So the, just a painting skill. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of buffing because it's nice and shiny. I didn't buff. Oh no, it's it's just paint then, huh? Mm -hmm. So acrylic paint and um, I can't pronounce. So this is not a secret. A poly polyurethane. Oh, polyurethane. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Polyurethane. So the wood stuff. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And what what inspires you to make these these sculptures? Because they are. It's more than just leather work. It's more than just a tooled wallet or a tooled saddle. This is like like these pieces can go in, in a museum and like mm -hmm. your your determination hawk can sit behind glass and everyone who walks by will never know that it's leather because mm -hmm. it looks like a true taxidermy bird what what is it inside you that inspires you to make these these pieces i love challenging myself also challenging to like mother nature like copying mother nature is oh, it's really fun because uh, when I making feather like try try to make feather I have to figure figure it out the construction like the texture and everything and then I picked up like crow feathers on the road and then put it down under the microscope and then see the feather oh it's gross like what is this like in my head and the real stuff, it's completely different image, but this is real stuff. And then I start thinking like why it has this texture. There is a reason. Then I kind of like feel and then figure out oh, this makes like good airflow, catching the air and then air goes, airflow goes this way. So I love finding out those things. Yeah. Gotcha. Like when I make bonsai tree, like, yeah, tree is tree. The bulk is like this. But when I see the, watch the bulk like really carefully, that's, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the like fun part. So it's the challenge that really excites mm -hmm. you. So that all the texture and then shape has reason. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's something. And now that you've done these beautiful pieces mm -hmm. and you're, you're continuing to challenge yourself, what is 
What is next for you? So next one is life-size golden eagle. Life-size golden eagle. Yeah. So it's already started. So I didn't uh, start making it, yeah. but I took a wood carving seminar to carve like a um, miniature golden eagle. So yeah, next project is life-size golden eagle sitting on a jagged rock. Gotcha. That's my next. I'm, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see the progress and everything. So I want to wrap this up and I want to ask, uh, I know that you're, you attend trade shows. You enter your work into trade shows mm -hmm. and you have a booth, uh, to, uh, most likely, or typically you do. And if somebody comes by, they can meet you, they can see your work, they can see stuff that you have available to sell. And what are other things that you do at the trade shows? So I teach. So the classes, uh, five or six classes. Actually, next year, I'm going to start teaching how to make that feather. Oh. So find assemble and um, how to design direct onto leather, how to set up build knife skyver and edge finishing class how to sharpen um, Japanese style leather knives. Also, like I judge and you, and competition you... and just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So okay. So yeah, you you have your hands full with with the trade shows then. Mm -hmm. And then for the Sheridan, I will have booth too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in 2024, are you going to be at all the trade shows, or do you attend some? Because I know your schedule is kind of busy. Yeah, I will attend um, all the major leather show except um, L Watts. Gotcha. Yeah, because that one's overseas. Mm -hmm. So, well, they can see you at uh, Prescott. They can see you at Sheridan, Sheridan and then Waco. Waco, Texas, and then Federation show. And the, yep, Federation show. And then there is also uh, Pendleton. Pendleton. Yes. Awesome. So, twenty twenty four, five ways to see some of your work that hopefully that you bring. And the final question mm -hmm. is, where can they contact you if they want to ask you questions or inquire more about some of your work or anything like that? What's the best way to contact you? Uh, email. Email. Yeah, because um, I don't answer my phone call. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your email? Yonezawaleza at markgmail.com. So yonezawaleza at gmail.com. All right. Well, Yoni, thank you so much for telling your story mm -hmm. i appreciate it i think it's it's amazing and um you you just do absolutely incredible work thank you i mean it's 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 just stunning it's stunning stuff so um <laughs> i i do like i wish and i hope i get to that level one day you um will. You will. just time and and effort and all that good stuff so we'll you know i have a couple ideas of some projects that i want to do so that's what I'm, uh, I have them on my, my to-do list. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll have to, when I get to that point, I'll talk to you about it and yeah. say, hey, here's my plan. This is mm -hmm. what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, anytime. And then hopefully I can pick your brain on some, some techniques mm -hmm. that if I, you know, have an issue. So again, thank you so much. All right, you guys, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to next month's episode. Actually, uh, there's another special guest and take care and good luck on your future projects.